next topic is one it is services we have looked at pod we know how to scale number of pods in kubernetes cluster there is one problem we don't know how to access our application inside cluster and from outside of the cluster the way we have tried is by using the pod ip so using pod ip client can connect to the application running inside the pod however pods are mortal and when they die they are not resurrected they are recreated so if this pod goes off instead of that the new pod comes up with the new ip and everything so what happens to the client which is connected to the previous pod using the pod ip that's gone now it's unavailable that's the problem services are abstraction to expose an application using reliable ip port and dns name so job of service is to expose the pod over network using reliable ip port and dns which never changes so it's kind of like fixed associate pods with service using matching labels services are used for inter pod communication as well from one microservice to another microservice so internally applications talk to each other using services client connects to services either using the dns name or the ip address both are fixed services internally created a, another object called endpoint so it is kind of visible but created by service when service connects to the pod using matching labels all endpoints that service is connected to is stored inside the endpoint object so endpoint object stores a list of all pod ip address that are associated with service also it keeps updating pod ip as and when they come and go so if i have a new pod coming up then it will be added if i have a pod going out it will be removed from the endpoint so endpoint object is where you will see that the pods are added and removed as and when they come and go we have multiple types of services available in kubernetes world the first or the default one is cluster ip it exposes the service on cluster internal ip and it is only reachable within the cluster network you can't access service outside of the kubernetes when you are using cluster ip this is very good option for internal communication node port is another type of service which exposes the node on which the pod is running on a static port and that's why it is called as node port so it uses node ip and node port using that you can reach from outside of the cluster also because the node is accessible outside and whatever the node visibility is you can access from that if your node hosted on aws and it has a public ip you can access on the public ip from anywhere another type which is called load balancer this is a special type of service which is available in cloud service providers so you can use aws elastic load balancer you can expose the service publicly using elastic load balancer let's look at the descriptor yaml we have to always define everything in yaml files kind of object which is service here you specify the metadata name the type is another parameter where you specify which type of service you are looking for the default is cluster ip the selectors are the labels to connect to pod so let's look at the replica set in replica set i have a two replica running and my pod labels are dobby pod the ports that we connect to in service maps to a port inside your container so this target port should be the same as container port here the selector labels are used to connect to pods so any pod matching this label 
will be part of the service irrespective of whether it's part of a replica set b replica set doesn't matter so service directly connects to for with the matching label let's see this demo so i have a simple service created which is dobby service connecting to pods which is having the label app dobby pod which is there in my uh, dobby replica set first thing kubectl get service i have one service running kubectl get endpoints i have the same endpoint defined for the service the name of the service and the name of the endpoint is same that's how they are connected with each other i have this four window here the first one is showing you the pods the second one is showing you the replica set the third one is service and the fourth one is endpoints let me first start the replica set notice two desired state current state they are getting created so if you notice i have two dobby pod running on node 2 and node 3 now let me apply my service you notice that service is created here with cluster ip 10.1051061115 the endpoints are both the pods which are running here 10244110444444 and 10244428 here right let me do one thing let me remove the replica set replica set is getting terminated pods are gone the service is still there service is running on the same cluster ip however the endpoints are removed there are no endpoints there this time what i'll do is like i'll increase the number of pods to 4 so i have four pods coming up notice here One, two, three, and four. All the pods are added to the endpoint. The cluster IP is still exactly the same that I had before. What happens if I delete a pod? Pick up this one. So one dot eleven. Remember that that I am deleting one dot eleven. gone terminating one dot eleven is gone it is removed from this pin up a new pod the new pod got the new ip and that ip got updated in the endpoint list and that's how the whole reconciliation loop also works and the services constantly keep updating the endpoints let's describe the service you'll notice that there's all the information along with the label selector that we have specified i can also describe endpoint the endpoint will have list of all the pod ip addresses that are part of the service go and deploy the another type of service which is node port so node port service is exactly similar like your normal cluster ip service the only difference is between this the type is node port i have also given the name of the service as node port so that i can have both the service coexist at same time another important part in the node port you can specify which node port you want to expose to if you don't specify this it will pick up the port randomly so let's run this if you notice the node port service is created the port on the node is bound to 30003 and the new 
endpoint is also created. We'll see this one, and it has the same list of endpoints there. Let's try and access. First, I have to get nodes minus o y. So I get my node IP. So this is my IP. I can use any any node IP. I have another utility which is installed on my machine, which is called as HTTP Py. Specify the IP followed by three zero zero three slash meta. I access this URL. I got the response, which is JSON. Shows up as hostname doggy rs r seventy gj, which is this one, right? Let me try accessing again. Let's see what happens. It is a different port. If I again access, it will be another port, BL. So it is like kind of a load balancing across all the ports. So service is also doing the load balancing across all the ports. Let's put this in a while loop so that I can see the responses coming from different ports. So notice the port name that shows up here and the time that I printed at the end. So service is splitting the load across different ports. The next part that I want to showcase is how I can access the service using the DNS name. The DNS name is the service name. But to access the DNS, I cannot access from outside. The DNS service is only available inside pod. I'm getting inside the hello node pod. And from here, I'm trying to access Dobby service. While accessing it, instead of using the IP, I'm going to use the DNS name. What is working? I got the response, right? Let's put this in the loop and see if it is going and load balancing across all the pods. So it is working. So I'm accessing all the pods using service. Remember that this DNS service is only available inside pods. So from one pod, I can access to another pod by DNS name. However, I cannot access that from my host machine or I cannot access from my even worker nodes. Kubernetes provides this DNS service as part of one of the feature. Now let's look at the pods which are providing this DNS service. So if you go to the list of all the pods, you'll notice that there is core DNS pod running in the cube system namespace. And these pods are the one who provides that DNS service to all the pods within the cluster. Let's do one small trick here where I'll keep running and accessing my application, whereas I bring down some pods and bring up the pod again. So I'll say while I'm running this application here, in my this terminal where I'm constantly hitting the URL, open another window, back to my cluster. I'm going to delete one of the pods. Pod terminated. Recreated, running. All my request is still working fine. So if pod goes up, comes back again, all that is taken care by the service. Another quick thing that I would like to showcase to you is use of readiness and liveliness probe used for white services. I have right now Dobby replica set running with the desired count as four. However, I have not configured any liveliness probe or readiness probe in this. I will just use a simple replica set. If I go ahead and try to make any of the pods sick, any of the pod, right? I'm just hitting the service endpoint. This control readiness sick will go to any of the pod. It will not do any anything. It will not, and none of the pod will go into error state. Nothing will happen here because I have not configured the readiness and liveliness probe. 
let's go ahead and run the replica set with readiness and liveliness too. CubeCTL delete ARS, liveliness and readiness prop running on health and readiness endpoint. Let me just increase the replica count. So let me go ahead and deploy the replica set with prop. I'm running four pods. So here four replicas with readiness and liveliness prop configured. Take time to get it up and running. It's running. And slowly you will see the endpoints are also getting updated in a few seconds. The count ready count is zero. One showed up here, two showed up here, three and four. All good. Now I'm going to make one of the part sick. See this part, not well, it's not ready. The count decreased to three, right? See the endpoint, one pod, which is 2.15 got removed from here. That's how your liveliness and readiness prop works. So now to make it healthy, I have to go and hit the perfect endpoint. However, if I try to use the service, the request will never go to that pod, right? I have to pick that pod and directly hit the endpoint perfect. So what I'll do is like, I'll go to my Vagrant box. I'll do curl 2.15, right? That's the pod that I want to hit. Perfect. You'll see, it is healthy again, ready state, added to the endpoint list again. So for any reason, if your pod is not responding to the readiness probe, it is removed from the service list endpoints. So we looked at services as cluster IP, which is used for internal communication within the Kubernetes cluster. We looked at node port, where you can access your application using a port opened up on every node within the cluster. There is a third type of service, which is a load balancer. Now this service is available and implemented by cloud service providers. So to showcase and demo this service type, I have to set up my Kubernetes cluster on one of the cloud service provider. I have chosen the cloud service provider as DigitalOcean Using some Ansible scripts and all that, I have set up my cluster. My Kubernetes cluster running on DigitalOcean. I have set up four worker nodes and one master node. So if I do kubectl get nodes, I'll be able to see one master node and four worker nodes. Here I'm watching on the pods. I do not have any pods running, no services running, no endpoints. Now let's just deploy first replica set. So replica set is here. I'm just choosing 10 replica to show scaled version of the application. So we got all the 10 replicas created. So I have my all 10 pods run. Let's go to DigitalOcean UI and see the load balancer. In under networking, I have load balancer. I do not have any load balancer right now. What I've done is I've created a service of type load balancer. So let's deploy this service now. Service is getting created. If you look at the service LB created, endpoints are also assigned. However, the external IP is still pending. If I go quickly on the digital ocean, you'll see that now the load balancer is getting created. It takes few seconds to get, create the load balancer. Meanwhile, you'll notice one more thing, right? Whenever you create a load balancer type, it also creates a cluster IP. So you can use this for your internal cluster communication. 
with the load balancer it has created a node port as well so this is 32630 is a port available on each node to access your application and we'll see that how the actual digital ocean load balancer is accessing your pod via node port still getting created so now the load balancer is created the ip is available so now if you see only two nodes on which my pods are running medium 1 and medium 2 so if you see here medium 1 and medium 2 is able to serve the request to load balancer two nodes where i don't have pods running they are showing up down if i go to settings you'll notice that tcp port 32630 this is the port that has been assigned as a node port for my service so this load balancer is using 32630 port to access my application let's try and hit the url copy colon 4444 slash meta see this is available so this is accessible on the internet by this time you will also notice that the external ip is also showing up in the service load balancer external ip is this this is same as the ip that i have on my digital ocean load balancer that's all about the load balancer service type exercise time exercise 4 by now you must have figured out what is the exercise so create a node port service for metadata service and access following via node port from your host machine we have two endpoints that we learned one is to do the post which saves the data inside the metadata service and use the gate api to access the meta entries that you have stored in the post method in the previous step you'll notice that when you try to do get for the metadata sometime you get the data which you have posted and sometime you don't get it why we are not getting meta entries as expected in get call all the time it's random sometime you get sometime you don't get it. the metadata service that we have it uses the mongodb as a database to store meta entries in version 1 of this i am using in memory database which is embedded inside your application fat jar it is used mongodb which is memory mongodb database in version 2 i am going to connect to the real mongodb database so if i have a mongodb database running outside i can connect to it in the version that we have currently deployed in the exercise 4 when i run multiple pods of the metadata service version 1.0 each service has its own database running inside if my post call goes to the first pod that i have it is stored inside this database here in case of get call if that get call goes to another pod then you won't get data back however if by chance if you go to the first pod where you stored the data you will get the response back so that's the problem so what we want is one mongodb database and two metadata service so when you use metadata service version 2.0 it tries to connect to the mongodb database which is outside if you make a post call it goes to any of the pod but the data is stored inside the mongodb which is common so when you try to get it again you will always go to the same database and you will get the response as expected next exercise is to deploy new pod using mongodb image first you have to create a pod using the mongodb image then create a cluster ip service for mongodb now remember to give the name as mongo so that the database is available on the mongo dns name so it becomes a host name remember mongodb database runs on the port 27017 now change the metadata service to point to the new image which is 
Sunit Parekh metadata version 2.0. And you can pass the MongoDB URI environment variable to connect to the MongoDB database and give the host name as Mongo, which is same name as your service name. And that's how you connect to the MongoDB. Now try doing post and get again, and you will get the desired results.